What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with immersive engineering and today guys we're going to be setting up the solar tower and that is going to allow us to finally put what we made last episode to good use. Now I would normally say if you have not seen last episode that you should go watch it and I will still say that but you don't actually have to because last episode we set up what is in front of me right now which is the distiller which very simply allows us to turn water into distilled water and then that distilled water is what we're going to be working with today but you actually don't need sort of this middleman step of making the water into distilled water to use it because we can both use distilled water or regular water today so if you'd like and you want your setup to be a little bit more efficient a little bit cooler and a little bit more complicated absolutely go back one episode and watch the distiller setup but if you really don't care that much and you just want to get some steam power generation going and you would like to start at the solar tower that we're setting up today you can absolutely put water directly into that so the only reason that you would want distilled water over regular water is either a you want the salt that you're going to get from the distiller or more likely, if we go to the solar tower page here in the manual, you can see that on the second page, one bucket of distilled water produces 750 millibuckets of steam, one bucket of regular water produces 500 millibuckets of steam. So it's gonna give us a little bit more per operation, per bucket of liquid we are putting in. Uh, it gives us 1.5 times as much. So not too bad if you actually have a little bit of power to spare and a little bit of space, but Without further ado, we can jump into actually setting up the solar tower, which unfortunately is gonna be a little bit more complicated than the name actually leads on, because unlike other mods, we do not have solar panels in immersive engineering or any of the add-ons for it. So coming over here to our chest, we have a couple things. There's a fair bit of steel going into today's build, mainly because of the sheet metal, the steel fences, and the steel scaffolding. Uh, the rest of the stuff is pretty typical stuff. We have some heavy engineering blocks, light engineering blocks, redstone engineering block, uh, some fluid pipes. We're gonna want extra of these, so I have 12 more down here, just for piping the fluid over from the distiller, or if you're just using regular water from a pump. And then we've got some treated wood fences. And finally, we are using some silver. Um, we haven't really used that much, but uh, this block of silver is for setting up, not the solar tower, but the solar reflector, which is something we can talk about right now. So the solar tower itself, like I said, does not have any solar panels on it. So you might be wondering, well, how is it solar? How does it actually utilize the power of the sun if it's just a big tower? And that is because you have to set up solar reflectors. You can set up to four of them up. You need at least one for it to function. And you are basically going to have these huge mirrors, which is where the silver is used, um, basically as the mirror to reflect the sun into the internal part of the solar tower. And that might not make much sense until you actually see the multi-block structure, but that's how it's gonna work. And so when you look in the manual, you will see the solar tower is gonna require all these different materials. And then if you keep flipping the uh, solar reflector, which is not super big, is gonna require its own materials. So first things first, we are going to be setting up the solar tower itself. And so we are going to make the projector for this one pull that out and we are going to be setting it up over here and something you have to keep in mind is we're only going to be setting up one solar reflector for this ever because I'm not trying to min max the whole setup like I said you can have four but they need to be at least five blocks away between five to ten blocks from each side so the main reason we're setting it up over here is because we are able to if we put it right here come over one two, three, four, five. And if we were to set it up right here, then we'd be totally okay. So we're probably gonna put this bad boy like right here. And I just wanna make sure in the manual that I guess, you know, it will totally be fine if we put it right here because we can see the fluid inputs and outputs are gonna be on this side, uh, the side to the right and the back right there. Cause you can see the pipes on the bottom. So we're gonna want it pretty readily accessible to have the steam uh, coming out up here and then one of the two inputs uh, close to the side that we're gonna be wanting to input the fluid from. So we can start setting this up here and now we will get all of our stuff out here to work with on the bar. Got a lot of different stuff to work with. So we'll get down the fluid pipes to start here, work through some of the scaffolding. Now this one is a pain because I believe it is three by three by seven. So uh, no joke in terms of the height. Uh, so that makes it a little bit more, I guess, annoying you could say to set up just because you gotta 
jump up and down a fair bit as you're as you're building it. Luckily though, the middle layers pretty much are the same as you go through. So you're gonna be doing the sheet metal around the sides, engineering block in the center, and then you're gonna have some fences as you go up on all the corners. So go around like so. Now this one, you actually do not have any of the sheet metal, so don't get tripped up by that. And then we'll go through the center just because we want to be able to put down the sheet metal. We want to have something to actually put it on. Oh, there we go. And then we got to put down the fences again. And we should be nearing, I believe, this is the second to last. And then we're just going to have to jump right off this thing. Oh, hey, we're getting pretty close to our, our turbine up here, our little windmill. Uh, I actually forgot that we made that a long time ago. Um, and I was looking up in one of the thumbnails one day, and I saw it on the wall. I was like, oh, yeah, we did do that in episode four or five, maybe. Can't remember. Okay, so we got to break this, and then we are done. And then we hop down, and to make this, we're going to have to pull out our engineer hammer and click on the redstone engineering block. So now we have this all taken care of. Looks pretty cool. And hopefully now you can see what I was talking about with the light being reflected into the inside blocks of the solar tower. So you can see that each side has sort of a little bit of an opening uh, that you can see some of the center engineering blocks in. And that is what the solar reflector is gonna have to line up with. And you can see we have the input here we have a fluid input here and we have the fluid output here. So I think what we're gonna do is wrap this around back here, just so that we have a little bit more room to work with over here. And you actually do have uh, a UI for this. So you can see it stores 32 buckets of the distilled water. And you can see it's actually pretty cool here because you are able to see which of the sides actually has a working solar reflector on it. So you've got the four different sides right here depicted. And the minute we get a working solar reflector down, whichever side that is is gonna turn yellow. So it's really nice because you can see if you actually set it up right and if it's registering as a reflector, because I know a long time ago, you actually did not need these to be far away. And so people had them set up directly next to the solar tower and the problem was, that one of the updates about a year ago broke that setup and people had no idea why. So just a word to the wise, if you have been doing that or that's kind of the setup you're trying to go with, that does not work anymore. It needs to be between five and 10 blocks away. So what we're gonna do is, this one doesn't really require much, two light engineering blocks, four steel scaffolding, one block of silver and some treated wood fence. So hopefully you still have some of those laying around. I know we've kind of upgraded mostly to steel, but if you're still making Coke in the Coke oven, you should be good. Uh, and then we are going to grab out the manual, make the projector again. I don't know if it's really necessarily worth it to do on this one, but why not? So we're gonna rotate this and then we are gonna make sure that it's lining up like that. And that should be good. Get all this stuff out on our bar and here we go. So I'm hoping it shouldn't interfere with any of our any of our wiring that's going on here. Let's see if I can get that. Haha. -ha. It did. We're still gonna have to make our way up here though, because uh, do I have anything? Yeah, I have some dirt, thankfully. So we can get up here, finish this off. Get this down. Where is our block of silver? And then like that, like that. Ooh, I guess I had an extra iron sheet metal. Okay, so then all we're gonna do is click on the block of silver, and there we go, we have our solar reflector there. So it looks pretty cool. Uh, and then if we come over here, you can see nothing is lit up, but that's because you actually need the sun for it to work. So it got a little bit unfortunate that uh, it was actually nighttime the minute the thing got assembled. But uh, if we come over here now, you can see that it is in fact lighting up. So this side is working, which means that it actually should be converting some of the distilled water 
into Steam. Now, the more you have, the faster it's going to go, but you only need one for it to actually function. So, uh, like I said, we're only going to set up one. I'm only concerned with actually seeing the whole setup with how the Steam actually functions. Not super concerned about min-maxing because we really don't have a huge use for this power, but it actually is a pretty viable power setup if you actually have something to do with that power other than just use it to make more things that generate power like we're doing in this series. So I would advise you that if you have the space, uh, try setting up all four of them, see how awesome it is. It's definitely a cool looking and relatively large multi-block structure that you're gonna be setting up considering it's gonna take up a ton of space. But uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much gonna be it for today, guys. Next episode, we are going to start utilizing that steam that we're making. So slowly getting through the immersive tech steam power generation. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I will talk to you later. Standing in a glass bowl at the end of a black coal, coal lost and upside down. Faces rolling past me, all my memories rolling vastly.